All right. So we're going to go ahead and move into the slideshow. And uh, just for, for those who missed any trainings, if you missed last week's training, if any, of that, if any of that went on, just so you know, the trainings are always on my YouTube channel. And they're always on my Facebook page, Becoming an Entrepreneur. So you can always go there and look at the recording because I do upload them to YouTube and I edit them and then I, I put them out there for people to be able to take a look at uh, if you need to. So you can always get the information from there as well if you happen to miss uh, the training live. So obviously you guys know I'll be training with Miss Sharanda Ivy and I'll be doing an introduction for her after I go over a couple of different things and she'll be giving you her story and talking about how she's used smart goals and uh, accountability to get herself where she's at in the business uh, right now. And when you guys see Jackie Cote, who trained with me last week, if you guys see her uh, here or, or speak to her or see her on Facebook or Instagram uh, here after this training, go ahead and congratulate her because her and her husband just got their 100K ring, which just released about an hour ago. Uh, so they've been in the business about seven or eight months and they already got their 100K ring. So uh, really a big deal there. That was the guest, uh, guest trainer last week. So. Uh, just a quick quote by Mark Victor Hansen, uh, and I love this quote because of what I have in the goal, which is recording your dreams uh, and goals on paper. So by recording your dreams and goals on paper, you set in motion the process of becoming the person you most want to be. Uh, put your future in good hands, your hands. And that, that, that phrase and that quote is so important because you want to put pen to paper. It's one thing to have to say I've got goals in my head is another thing to write them down. That's why we're going to be interactive here as we do goals. And you'll see as we look at the smart goals, you'll see that we, we really do talk about active. Sorry about that, guys. It's new, just giving me a hard time. All right, so. <clears throat> Here, so for those that don't know what SMART goals are in general, if you don't know what SMART goals are, really important for you to really understand this. And the PowerPoint here will be coming out to you. So again, uh, if you want to take pictures of the slides, feel free. But I will be emailing this PowerPoint along with the, the goals that Sharanda Ivy is going to be talking about. Uh, and the actual recording will all come out to you in the email within about 24 to 48 hours. So the, this entire slideshow that we go through, you will actually get this slideshow uh, here that we have. So don't worry about that. But the S in SMART goal stands for specific, significant, and stretching. And this is, this is important because we set goals for ourselves and we don't, we're, we're not specific. So when I go to set a goal for myself, I can't say, hey, I want to get, I want to get to myself to executive director. Or I want to get myself to a business it is that I'm trying to go with the business. <laughs> When I say that I want to do that, I, I have to know that it's got to be specific. Uh, that, that, that definitely has to be something specific that I'm doing. I have to specifically set that goal. So if I'm running for executive director, I have to ask myself, what date am I running for? That's a specific, uh, to, to hit executive director. Am I looking to hit it on a certain day, a certain date, a certain month? Am I giving myself three months, four months? So we're going to go over that. As we set goals, we're going to go over making sure that they're, spe they're specific, they're significant, and they stretch you a little bit. And we're not, I'm not talking about stretch you like a BHAG. So for those that know what a BHAG is, which is a big, hairy, audacious goal, uh, those can sometimes be overwhelming. So I want you guys to focus on a goal that will stretch you, but it won't stretch you to a point where you, you you can't get it done because you're disappointed if that makes sense so we don't want we don't we don't we don't want that to happen hold on one second uh, uh huh i found the problem out here sorry guys i'm 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 fumbling, I'm fumbling with this mute because it's it's giving me a problem and People are joining the call and their line is unmuted when they join. And that's why we keep hearing that noise every time somebody jumps on the call. So I'm trying to. Get it going there. All right, I think I got it this time. Apologize again. So significant is stretching. So you want to stretch yourself. You, you really want to be stretched. Uh, so that you so that you feel like you're accomplishing something and it's okay to miss your goal and i'll talk about that a little bit too uh, i always miss my goals i missed my i miss executive director several months obviously when 
Um, when I finally got to executive director, I missed it for months and months and months and months and months uh, before I finally was able to hit it and, and really and really hold on to it. Uh, also, uh, with the ring, I missed the 50K ring. I don't even know how many how many times I said that. Like, I, I really don't even have a clue. But I set, I've set goals for my 50K ring uh, a lot, a lot. And it just... It, I just kept missing it, missing. It. I kept, ha kept having to push it out, push it out. A uh, hundred K ring, same thing. I kept missing it, but it wasn't because the goal was set too big. I just wasn't accomplishing that goal. But you want it to stretch you. You want it to be measurable, and you want it to be meaningful. So, a quick story, and for those that um, have been knowing Darnell so for any amount of time, have probably heard this story where he sat down with the young lady, excuse me, a young man, and asked that young man what his why was. And the gentleman responded by telling him that his why was money. And, and I want you all to be careful with that, with your why being money, because the money isn't enough. It's gotta be what you're using the money for. And that's one of the biggest pitfalls we'll fall into as, we, as we're running for success, especially when you've got the naysayers that are saying, oh, well, you know, money isn't everything and you can't do everything for money. But guys, what I do for a living, I don't do for money. I do for what I can do with the money. So it's not about the money that you're making. It's what the money can do. So you, you may have heard me say this on, a, on another training. You can tell me all day long that money is not everything. And, and, and money is not everything. But guess what? It pays for everything. So if you don't have any money, you can give me all the sayings you want to. You're going to lose your house. You're going to lose your car. You can't take care of your family. You can't, if you don't have money, you can't do things. Bottom line. So money is important, but it's about what you're doing with the money. So what Darnell Sell got this person to really uh, be transparent about was what he needed the money for. So the gentleman said, I just need more money because I want to move into a bigger house. And Mr. Sell said, well, why do you want to move into a bigger house? He said, I want to move into a bigger house because this house is too small. Because again, the ego, he didn't want to really let Mr. Sell know why he was having this issue. So Mr. Self said, well, why do you want to live in a bigger house? I mean, it sounds like a, seems like a reasonable size house. Is there something going on with the house that you're not telling me? He said, well, I want to have a house with more rooms. And Mr. Self said, well, wh why do you want more rooms in your house? And then he finally came out and said, because my son and my daughter are sleeping in the same bedroom and they're too old to sleep in the same bedroom. So the reason why the gentleman needed to make more money was because he needed to move into a bigger house so that his two teenagers could live in separate rooms. So what I want you to take from that is, if your why is money, there's a lot of things you can do for money. If your why is so, so, um, I guess, non-descriptive that you can say, I have a why, but it's not really anything that's meaningful to you, then what's going to happen is you'll let anything knock you off your horse. Right? Uh, you know, anything can happen. A death in the family could happen. A kid being sick could happen. Uh, there's a lot of things that'll happen and then you say, hey, look, I'm not going to do this anymore because I don't have the time to do it because you didn't give yourself a big enough goal right? or your goals that you wrote down weren't meaningful enough for you to really push through the different circumstances that you're going to have. That's why it's so important to really have smart goals as opposed to regular goals. So you see the A stands for attainable and action orientated. Why is that so important? One, we want it to be attainable, right? Because you can't join Legal Shield or uh, open up a tax office or uh, 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 start speaking as a motivational speaker or, or whatever it is you do for a living and then say you're going to be at the top of your game two months from now. I can't open up a tax office and say I want 3,000 clients this year and this is my first time opening up a tax office. I got no, ex no experience in opening up a tax office, but I want 3,000 clients. That's not really attainable. It's not attainable for me uh, as a as a trainer to say I'm gonna start a training company and 12 months later I'm gonna be training in companies with 50,000 100,000 employees fortune 500 companies could that happen am I saying that you shouldn't have affirmations like that you should have affirmations that are huge but you have to know what's attainable so there's a thin line with that so I want you to be careful with that when you're saying hey I've got some great affirmations but you've got to know uh, what's possible and what's not possible as you as you build it and you're, and you're creating these smart goals so action orientated something that's going to make you go and, and i, and I want to action orientated to be in there because you know i'm you know i'm a praying i'm a, I'm a praying man i'm a christian I, you know I, I, i'm in a family full of christians and you know i'll tell you 
it's really easy sometimes for people to pray and not do anything. So what I don't want people to do is say, I'm going to do affirmations. I'm going to write goals down. And, you know, the powers that be, whatever those powers are for you, are going to just make some things happen. I'm just going to be successful because I'm asking for it. I'm praying for it, but I'm not going to do anything, right? I want to go from a Cadillac to a Mercedes, but I'm not going to do any more work, right? I'm not going to do anything extra. I'm not going to put in any extra hours, not any extra days. Whatever it is my business consists of me doing, I'm not going to put an extra effort in to do it. I'm just going to get on my knees and pray, or I'm going to get up and say affirmations every day. Or I'm going to write my goals all over the house and just assume that they're just going to come to fruition, even though I'm not upping my activity. So action oriented really does help your goal. And that's, that's, that's what being accountable is about. And that's what, about, that's, that's what it is to say, hey, you know what? I'm, I'm going to set a goal to make 40 calls a day. That's action oriented, right? I'm, I, was, I was only making 15. Now I'm going to make 40. So now you're making 25 calls more a day, five days a week. That's 125 calls more than you were making. I mean, you, 25 more calls when you're only doing 15, you've more than doubled your calls. So we want you, we want you to set goals that are action oriented and then results oriented so that you see the effect and you can keep continuing to press on. So it's nothing like going to the gym for six months or a year and don't see a change in your body. It's really difficult to keep going because there's no result there. So, so, so the hour is realistic and results oriented. So you, again, you want to, you, you, you want to play this game with yourself that you say, okay, I'm going to go out and do something. So if you make 20, 50, 40 calls a day, you will see the results. If you, if you up your calls from 15 to 25, if like when I, when I used to own a tax office, uh, we, one of the things you have to do at, with a tax office, you got to do a, 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 a whole lot of green, uh, grassroots, uh, market. So we will order 20, 30, 40,000 uh, door hangers. And we would go to all the apartment complexes and we would hang them up and we would go to the Walmart parking lot and put them under all the windshield wipers. Uh, I apologize if that was one of your windshields that we damaged with our flyers. <laughs> but we did that all over the place. And we made sure we covered a lot of ground. And we had to really hit it hard before tax season started. So people already knew to come to us. We had to do it all the way through tax season. But guess what? Results orientated. If I walked in the office of my tax office and I wasn't getting a call from a Walmart, if I wasn't getting a call from a HH Greg, if I wasn't getting a call from the anchor, the anchor store in that parking lot where those flyers were being put, that told me that the guys that I had working weren't putting enough flyers out. Because when you put, when you plant flyers all over cars inside of Walmart parking lot, guess what happened? Walmart management calls you and says, hey, look, I'm looking at one of your flyers. They're all over our parking lot because people are throwing them off their car onto the ground. Results oriented. So I knew that those guys were working. And then I would know because more people would be coming to the tax office. And guess what we had on every sheet when they walked in the front door to start filling it out to file their taxes? Where did you hear about us? Where did you hear about us? Where did you hear about us? And that gave me an opportunity to look at that and say, oh, you know what? The, where they're marketing right now is a good place because we're getting a lot of customers from there. So whatever you're doing, so if you're, if you're making dials, right? Cause you're saying, look, I'm, I'm killing this legal shield thing. I'm making dials, right? Result oriented, right? If you're, if you're, if you're looking on a, if you're on a recruiting side or the business solution side, that matter. Action oriented, but you should be able to see results. If you're in that gym, hitting that gym, you should be able to see results. You should see gains. If you don't see gains, you got to look back at your goals and figure out where, you, where they're going wrong. That's why it's important for them to be action oriented and results oriented. And then the last T, the last letter, which is T, is time-based, tangible, and trackable. And tangible is good, but what I like most here is time-based and trackable. Because it's real easy to say, hey, you know what? I'm going to um, hit executive director. Well, when? So when, when are you going to hit executive director? That's that's my question. When, when, when are you going to hit? Hold on one second. Oh, okay, there we go. Yeah, when are you going to hit executive director? Because you can say that and always be not lying to yourself if you don't have a date that you're supposed to be hitting. Because I can keep saying, oh, yeah, I didn't say I was going to hit it this one. I'm, I'm just going to hit it one day, right? I'm going to get the ring one day. You've got to put a date on it. 
If you don't have a date on your goal, then it's not a goal. It's a dream. You're just daydreaming. I promise you there is no goal set if you don't have a date of when you're going to accomplish it. So I can tell you my ring date. I can tell you, um, you know, whatever my, I can tell you when, you know, when my book is releasing. I can tell you all the things about what I'm doing. And even, again, I may miss it. As a matter of fact, there's no may. I probably will miss it because I'm a realist, right? I probably will miss it. But I, I will, as soon as I realize I'm not going to hit it, I adjust the date. And I tell the people that's holding me accountable what my new date is. And that's what I want you all to do. So let's look at the, oh, hold on real quick. Trackable. Uh, trackable. So, man, decrease or increase. So I, I, I'll, I'll say it again. You cannot increase what you don't track. And you cannot decrease what you don't track. So the reason why I have a sheet that I use to run for the, for the next ring is because if I don't know what's coming in, how do I get it to the number it needs to be for me to accomplish my goal? I can't say I want to go from $8,333 a month, right, to $12,500 a month if I don't know where my money's coming from. So every single day of the week, I track, I track, I track. So let me show you, let me show you something. Real quick, mm. something that I'm tracking. Should have had this out, but I didn't. <clears throat> this is me tracking income. Every day I look at my commission statement, I track my income because I want to know exactly what came in in residual. I want to know what came in in overrides. I want to know what came in from sales I made. I want to know what came in from bonus money. I track every single thing. Now, I know that may be tedious, and you may be saying, you know what? I don't know if I want to do that. It's your business. You can hire an assistant, right, to do it, or you can figure out how you're going to do it yourself. I, you know, I used to have my teenagers do it, but they're gone now. So I used, to have, I used to work them to death. But now I do it myself. And if you don't track, you will not adjust what you don't track. So I've got another sheet, uh, another, and I, it's, it's, it's actually up on my counter here, so I'm not going to get up, but I've got another uh, sheet similar to this one. And you know what I'm tracking? I'm tracking the thing I'm doing. For, for, not, I'm not really on a diet, but I'm on a, I'm on a meal plan. And the meal plan, I, I have to track my calories. I have to track my sugar. I have to track whether it's sugar that's naturally in something versus included sugars. And I have to, I have to keep a track of all of that because I've got a weight goal and a, and a body composition that I'm running for based on macros. And I know some of y'all that don't mean anything to you, but I have to track that because how do I decrease my caloric intake if I don't track my caloric intake in the first place? So you've got to track your goals if you want to increase them. You've got to track your weight if you want to decrease it. That's how, that's how it works. So your goal being trackable is definitely something that you're really going to have to learn how to really, 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 um, really get a full understanding on how to track that specific goal. Real quick here. So this, this, this screen here is showing you the do's and don'ts of SMART goals. Excuse me, guys. I'm pausing, but I'm... <clears throat> moving the, my dialogue box around. So the do's and don'ts of setting SMART goals. So you see here it says, do set real numbers with real deadlines, but don't say I want more visitors because that's not specific enough. That's not specific, I want more visitors. Again, you're dreaming, right? right? I get affirmations, but again, I can't wake up in the morning and say I want to go from 500 customers to 1,000 customers, but then don't up my action oriented things so that those results actually come. It's no mystery here, guys. There's no science to it. It's just, right, you speak things and then your brain works in a specific way, but you've got to actually move into action, right? So for measurable, it says, make sure your goal is trackable, but don't hide behind buzzwords like brand and engagement. Like you can't hide behind behind words. You, you got to actually go and make these things happen if you're looking to make them happen. So it says, or social or influence, right? Attainable. Do work towards a goal that is challenging, 
but possible. Don't try to take over the world in one night. So again, we want to make sure that they're attainable, but they're a little bit scary, but you don't want them to be so big that you get so um, overwhelmed that you just let it go. So when I'm talking to personal trainers, right? I tell personal trainers when they tell me, well, you know, I'm losing customers. Um, I'm trying to figure out what I'm doing because I'll have somebody paying me and, you know, my business is going up and down because I'm a personal trainer and I'm charging, you know, $175 a month. And then I got this money coming in and then the client stops coming and now I lose the money. And I say, well, why do you think that they're stopping? Do you have any idea? And they're trying to tell me the things that they think. I said, well, how are you working with your clients? Tell me what you're doing with your clients. What kind of, you know, are you putting them on specific plans for, and they'll walk me through the process that they're doing. Well, what I found with a lot of personal trainers were that they push their clients so hard because they're used to working out hard. So they get that new client, they bring them in the gym and they burn that client so bad that the client doesn't even want to come back the next day. They're in too much pain. They sort of, they're working them to death instead of getting them used to getting them in the cycle of saying, Hey, I want you to come every day. So we're going to work out light in the beginning because I want to get you in the habit of coming because it's, that's two separate things. Now working out is one thing consistently showing up to the gym. That's a completely separate habit, two separate habits there, guys. You got one is I need to work out. And two is I need to show up to the gym so I can work out. If you, if I put you in so much pain that you don't even want to come back tomorrow, I lost you as a client. Now you're not even showing up. If you come and I put you on the, I put you on a spin and I say, look, you're going to spin for 10 or 15 minutes, do it slow. Just make sure you get in the rhythm. Make sure you get in the form. I want you to sweat, but I don't want you to be in so much pain that you don't come back. So I found with a lot of my clients that are personal fitness trainers, that's what they were, that's what they were running into because they were pushing them. So don't try to take over the world in one night and don't make your clients do that. Because if you, if you do, if you push people too hard, you can even do that with your team. If you're in network marketing, legal shield, you say, look, this is the deal. We got to run for this goal. And like to you, you've been in legal shield for 10, 20 years. That goal to you seems like nothing. But that new person, they're confused. They don't know what's left, what's right. They're looking at all these videos and they're looking at all of these meetings and Zooms and all this stuff. And you're telling them they got to do something in 20 days, but you're showing them a thousand different things and then they don't do it. And then they get disappointed and then now they do nothing. They don't, they don't fast start qualify and then they don't do anything else because we're overwhelming people. So make sure, again, when you're setting your own goals, don't overwhelm yourself, right? Be honest with yourself. You know what your team, you and your team are capable of. Don't forget, he said, don't forget any hurdles you may have to overcome. So when you're working with people, you've got to be realistic. You've got to let them know. That's why it's so, so uh, important for you to go through things. So, you know, if you're dealing with something in your business right now, right, your struggles, uh, you know, a bad time in your business, uh, some, some, you know, some, some hindrance that's going on in your business, guys, that's preparing you to be able to take somebody else through that change. Because when you've got a team of people working with you, you're leading people. When you're leading people, if when you're leading somebody, you haven't been through anything, when that person picks up the phone and calls and says, hey, Mr. Davis, hey, Mr. Jones, hey, Miss Ivy, look, I'm having an issue here. I'm going through this, or I'm going through that, or a prospect said this, or I called the corporate office and this is the issue I ran into, or my client told me this. If you've been through nothing, how do you help that client? So understand the issues that the, the things that you go through are going to really make you a stronger leader, but you got to be realistic and know that, Hey, things are going to happen. Um, and, and when they do happen, I have, you have to have a plan to get around these things when they happen. Somebody you can call, but be realistic when you set your goals, be realistic and understand that there's going to be some hurdles and be, and be willing to talk about them. Lastly, time bound, give yourself, give yourself a deadline, but don't keep pushing towards a goal. Uh, you, you might hit some day because some day is not any day on the calendar. I've never seen that on the calendar. There's no such thing as some day. But people seem to think that, yeah, I'm a, I'll get there one day. Yeah, I'm going I'm to I'm move into that house one day. I'm going to get this many clients one day. I'm going to get my ring one day, right? Whatever, whatever your deal is, um, I'm going to open up a gym one day or I'm going to have 20 clients one day. No, you got to set a date. You have to set a date. And some people are so specific that they actually set a time. So I want you to just really keep that in mind as you're setting your goals um, to, to, you know, to, to do that. So I'm going to be bringing um, uh, Sharanda Ivy on. And then when Sharanda Ivy gets on, we gonna, we, she's going to go through some her story. And then we're going to talk about 
actually setting some goals here right on uh, the actual line, you know, right here on this Zoom. Uh, so you can get some goals set while we're on this Zoom. And we want to make sure we follow the SMART synonym when we're doing that. Um, I mean, acronym, I'm sorry. The SMART acronym when we're doing that so that you can start getting that practice. And then you can, then you can go revamp all your goals. If you haven't set them as SMART goals, go revamp your goals and say, okay, let me look at this goal again. And let, let, me, let me revamp this and make it a SMART goal. Now, this is the time to do it. Because I'm telling you, when this, when this, whatever we're going through is over with, you want to be able to run out with all of the energy you have, with all of the, I don't want to be in the house no more, with all of the people going back to normal. You want to be able to go out there and kill it. Whatever it is you're doing, you want to be able to go out there and kill it. And you want to have all of your admin stuff in place. And that's what we want to be able to do. Have you unmuted yourself, uh, Mr. Randall? Let me see if I can find you here. Get you unmuted. Where is Sharanda? Oh, wait a minute. Hold on. Okay, I'm trying to unmute you now. I'm just trying to find you first. <clears throat> Some of y'all saying my screen is still on something else. I'm, uh, chat, go in that chat box, guys, and let me know. You should be seeing a picture of Sharanda right now. If, you, if, if that's not what you're seeing, let me know why, because I need to know why you're not seeing that if you're not. So if you're not seeing a picture of Sharanda Ivy, uh, let me know. Okay, thank you, Barbara. Uh, I'm looking, Sharanda. There's a lot of people on here. I'm looking, I'm looking. Sorry, guys. I'm trying to find Sharanda so I can unmute her. Uh, Sharanda, see if you can unmute yourself now. Yeah, can you hear me? Yeah, you got it. Mm-hmm. All right, so I'm going to go ahead and unshare my screen so you can share yours. Got it? So guys, make sure you guys grab some, make sure you grab some pen and paper, uh, uh, some, some pen, a pen and some paper to make sure that you can take uh, notes and also to make sure that you are able to write some goals down. Once you start this activity, you, you'll be able to continue it uh, on your own when this is all over. With, so. <clears throat> you still unmuted, uh, Sharanda? Oh, now I don't even hear you. Hold on. Unmute yourself, Sharanda. Okay, can you hear me now? Yep, I can hear you. Okay. For some reason, you showing up as Herman Davis, but I, I'm not gonna worry. I'm not gonna worry about why. <laughs> okay, can you? All righty. Can you hear me? Yeah, I can hear you. Yeah. Okay. All righty. Well, good evening, everyone. My name is Sharanda Ivy, and, and Mr. Dunbar, I appreciate you. I actually was over here taking notes, um, you know, from all the information you share because I'm still a student at this, but, you know, I made a decision, and so I, I'm just always just learning. 
um, because I have big goals, big audacious goals that I want to hit this year, and I have to get focused. So for those that don't know me, um, my name is Sharanda Ivy. I actually live in Georgia, um, about an hour and a half south of Atlanta, Georgia, um, down by Macon, Georgia. And so I've been uh, building my business with Legal Shield for this is my seventh year. Um, and so um, at this moment, um, I am the newest CDLP trainer for the company. Um, just um, got that position um, about four months ago. I've been a field trainer with the company about two years. Um, I was also named as the number one field trainer for 2019 and um, earned a Ladies of Justice Award um, that I'm waiting to receive in the mail. So. It's just some exciting times here in Legal Shield. I'm excited about my business. And, you know, when I started with Legal Shield, I, I had never really been an entrepreneur. I um, had worked a job for um, over 20 years in healthcare. Um, I went to school and got an associate, uh, an associate degree and um, had worked that job for, for um, almost 18 years. And um, my doctor, he downsized and, um, I had a son, I have three kids and I'm married here in Georgia and my baby boy is 11 and at the time he was four. And um, my older kids, um, they were older and I wanted to spend more time with my, my baby boy. And so I decided that I wouldn't go back and get a traditional job. <clears throat> and so, but I had never been an entrepreneur, but I always had that hustling spirit. spirit. But when I got introduced to this company, um, the system, the personal development uh, really taught me a lot. And so the things that, you know, I didn't really know I've learned here, but goal setting was new to me, kind of hocus pocus to me in a way. Um, and maybe you can relate on the line. Um, I don't know, but, um, you know, we at the beginning of the year would set goals. And, you know, Mr. Dunbar talked about how, um, we actually, you know, we, we set these big audacious goals and then sometimes we don't reach them. And that was me. You know, I, you know, I would do the goal setting exercise. Most people do at the end of the year. I would set these big goals, like, you know, hitting maybe ED when I was um, at the lowest position in the company, because I do know we have some people on the line that may not be in our industry, but they're entrepreneurs. But you know, just starting the business, I can remember wanting to go to the top position of the company, but I didn't have a plan, but I set that goal. And about four months in the year, um, I didn't see me making that. So I would switch my focus and maybe even get down and didn't do a whole lot more because I knew I wouldn't reach those goals. And I don't know if you can relate, but my fifth year in the business, um, you know, I was just disgusted. Like, I, I was sick of starting over every year and then getting to the end of the year and look back and just just didn't hit any goals. Uh, maybe, you know, one or two, but nothing significant. And so in, in 2017, I made, a, I made a decision. And I really wanted to get serious about my business. I felt it was the fifth year in the business and, you know, not judging or comparing myself to others, but I really wanted to hit some goals that others had achieved in a short period of time, you know, maybe less than me. And, and I felt like it was my time, but I never set myself up to really to win because I would set the goals and they really wasn't, you know, smart goals. They weren't specific. You know, I would say something, uh, you know, I wanted to hit executive director. I, I dare wouldn't put a date on it. Because I, if I didn't make it, I, I didn't want to feel so bad. And I didn't want to be held accountable because if I didn't make it, that means I let someone else down as well. So, but 2017, December 2017, I normally at the end of the year, um, you know, around December 20th, I, I really stopped running. I work in employee benefit space and I really take about two, three weeks off to really set myself up for the next year. So in 2017, I said, you know what, no more. This is gonna be the change that, you know, the year that I make a change and, and I'm gonna get serious about my business 
And I really had been thinking about this before January 2018. I really had started back in September putting some things on paper because what I did want to do is when 20, January 2018 started, I didn't want to have to start. I want to, I wanted to be running into that year. So September, I had really started to put some things on paper around November, start to kind of, you know, really com um, commit to some of the things I wanted and make it more specific, putting some dates on it, putting some plans in place on how I was going to achieve that, you know, how many sales I was going to make, how many calls or walk-ins I was going to do, what I was going to focus on. Um, this was the year that I decided that, you know what, even though I was a full service agent in, a, in my company, I still wanted to master something. Like I wanted to, you know, succeed in one area of my business. We have a will of opportunity here in my company, but I felt like if I stretched myself to do this division of the company, I did this division of the company, I never it never came to 100% of the pie. I was always shorting myself. But I said this year, I was gonna find my niche. I was gonna set the goal. I was gonna become a student of the industry and I was gonna go to work. I, I put pen to paper, put the plan in place and just, and just do it. And so I started setting my goals. And so January came and we had a second chance in, uh, incentive on the table for Jamaica. But, you know, I had already started the momentum. I was working, you know, January normally would be my lowest, lowest month. But I had recruited some people that last quarter into the business to work the business with me, not even tracking. And, you know, Mr. Dunbar talked about that. I wasn't even tracking my business. And when I looked up, I had won a trip to Jamaica. In just a few weeks, I had did this. Because I made a decision back in September and the activity I did in the, the fourth quarter allowed me and my husband an all expense paid trip to Jamaica a few months in June of 2018. And that was the result of just a focused goal, just doing the activity, putting the plan in place. And here we go, we had earned our first trip with the company. So that made me feel <laughs> phenomenal. Like, now I had a little momentum. I felt like I was winning. I felt like, okay, this decision I made was phenomenal. Like, okay, Sharani, you have to keep going. Because what I learned, you, you can't celebrate too long when you hit those goals. Yeah, you, you celebrate a little bit, but you can't take your foot off the gas. And I will talk about the goals that I put on paper and how I check those off. But, you know, things started to happen, you know. You know, and the, the cheese start moving and, and it happens like that. You know, you find yourself, you're on a good path and you feel like, okay, I'm on the right path and, and bam, you come into a roadblock. And so after, you know, winning that trip to Jamaica, you know, the trip was in June, I had still write my goals down on paper. And the thing about it is I had read a book by Steve Millia, 30 Ways in 30 Days. and and it's, uh, it talks about just getting your, your, your day started right, setting smart goals and, you know, getting around association, the right people, just everything to set yourself up, you know, set your business up as an entrepreneur. So I had read that. So I was ready. Like I was, you know, I, I saw a lot of things happening. But then I got this roadblock. We go to Jamaica, have a phenomenal time with about three to 600 of our business partners, all expense paid, just a pretty, pretty resort. Three days later, I get back and my mom broke her hip. So now the goals seem to have to shift, they have to pivot. But before leaving for that trip, I went because at this time with my goals, I had to make the decision, you know, to focus on that one area of the business. And I, and I chose CDLP, you know, the commercial division of our company. And this picture here is me at this, at this training. 
and I had took this training to sharpen my axe. I had I hadn't taken a training in about two years prior to this in this division of our company. But it was at this training that I said, you know what, this is where I need to be. But I still was writing my goals. I still had the vision of making it good, making it a great year in this division of my our company, even though after getting back from Jamaica a, a couple of weeks later, my mom broke her hip. up. But, you know, I took this class here two years ago, and it was the, really the beginning of all those goals that I was setting. It was the beginning of the success that I'm having now. So who moved my keys? An amazing way to deal with change in, in your work and in your life by Dr. Spencer Johnson. That's a good book to read. And personal development is everything because, like I said before, I made this decision. I would write my goals. Did I really believe them? A lot of times I didn't. I wrote them because my mentors, they had these great expectations of the things that they thought that I could achieve. So I made the goals of the things that I thought they wanted me to achieve, but I really didn't have a plan in place. I really wasn't focused on a lot of those things. And so when you're making your goals, it's for you. You know, and I can tell you, too, that it all goes back to your why as well. Because if your why doesn't move you, you won't move to hit these goals. So fall 2018, the cheese moved again. My mom comes out of rehab. And then her condition, her health conditions are, are, are worse. So now, as me, as a social butterfly that I am, I had to think of, about my goals again. And so, and we always sometimes give up on the goals and just stop. Or we shift, or what, you know, we shift and say, well, you know, this has happened. And I could have easily said, you know what, I'm a social butterfly. I can't go out and shake hands to the business owners, to the employees that I like to, you know, to um, meet face to face you know what, I'll just start over, right? Because this time it's about September, 2018, and I'm looking at, okay, I need to really set my goals, look at what 2019 is gonna be about. But I had to remember, I still had four months left in that year. And so instead of doing what I normally do, performing to quitting on myself and just letting those goals go to the wayside, you know, I forced myself to make dials, and, and, and if you're in our, in our business, some of us know that the phone can weigh a 1,000 pounds sometimes, especially if, you know, you guys are, y'all don't have a relationship, you and the phone. So it can weigh a 1,000 pounds, and that's what it weighs to me, and that's what it weighed at that time. And as opposed to my normal prospect and routine of walking the community, I really had to learn that skill. And so how did I move that cheese? I adjusted my goals. I continued working, but differently. I really had to pick up the phone because I couldn't go out. My mom's condition, I could wake up some days and, you know, she's just not in a position where I need to leave the house. So, you know, but I still got to build my business. You know, if you're in our organization, in our company, in Legal Shield, we have a uh, we have an incentive based off just your work alone. And I've I've been in the business for seven years, and I have qualified for that incentive performance club ever since month one of my business. I have never missed performance club, and so therefore I knew if I didn't do anything, I had to do at least performance club right from my home office and so i continue working but differently i can't write my goals because when you write your goals and, and in the book that Steve Amelia has if you write your goals and you do that every day without looking back you just constantly write your goals what it does is it gets engraved in your subconscious mind and you're telling yourself you can do it and even when you don't think that you've done the activity or, or, or get enough, things start to happen. The universe starts to conspire to do you good. At least that's what it does for me. So I kept affirming my goals, and, and, and Ms. Quincy talked about that two weeks ago. 
affirmations are everything. You know, just speaking things into existence, you know, it's power in the tongue. You have to be careful what you say. And I continued my activity because I knew that as long as I did the activity, the results would come. I focused on my goals and and it, it just has paid off so, so, so much, you know. And so October, December to December 2018, I connected with a CDLP certification trainer. So if you're in our organization or any other type of organization, you need a mentor. You need somebody to teach you. You need that you need that person that you can look to that has done what you've done. So it makes the, the goals that you set more achievable, more let you know that if they did it, I can do it. And so I connected with people like Mr. Dunbar, Lamar Reynolds. And Mr. Reynolds, he taught me from Texas right here from texas to georgia he taught me how to use this phone to continue to make income and i am forever grateful to this individual and he taught me how to read the, the safety reports and just from that in those three months i opened three groups virtually where those individuals never saw me they never laid eyes on me he taught me that i could be confident in what i knew and and when i built that posture you know, it helped me to open up those groups and do business as if I was a state farm or an all state agent or, you know, they really trusted me. And that right there made me begin to really check off my goals. So I adapt to change quickly. The quicker you let go of the old cheese, the sooner you can enjoy the new cheese. You have to move with the cheese, guys. And, and we're in a time now you know, you really need to set some goals because you have to prepare now because this is the season of sowing those seeds and you'll reap the harvest in a few months when the, the world opens back up. You have to be prepared. So you have to set yourself up for for success. But then again, the cheese moved again and life happened. December 25th, 2018, I tell you, I, I think about it now, I get chills, but not knowing what that day would have been that it did for me that day i had a relative had spent the whole day with me and my family was well, a tradition had done that for about three years two hours after leaving me at 40 years old she just dropped dead just just put a hole in my heart just and, and i really didn't know i really didn't know what that did to me to months later but that drove me. I would lay in bed at night. I would get up a lot of nights, you know, reading books, writing goals, researching companies, just building my business because I couldn't sleep or or just didn't want to close my eyes or the fear of seeing her face and, and things like that. This was in a bad way because of the death of a cousin that it just crushed me. But what it really did to me was drove me. It drove me to say, you know what, that hurt me, but I'm not going to sit here in this hole and, and, and let the dirt fall on me and, and I, sh you know, shriek to not reach the goals because it will make her happy. She used to love to come to my house and see the affirmations on the walls or you know, go to my mirror and see my little sticky notes that was affirming what my goals would be. She would, she loved that. And so instead of just, you know, losing everything I was dreaming about, I pushed myself through all that. And so a lot of days it drove me to continue to hit my goals when I didn't, I really didn't feel like it. Whether it was lack of sleep because I had been up all night, or just, you know, just sad because I something would remind me of her. And so just staying laser focused, January 2019, we had earned the, the trip to Vegas and it was a time where I, I really didn't want to go. <laughs> the funeral was then, but I had set these goals in place. I had wrote these goals. I had affirmed all of it and we had earned this trip. And so we, went on to, to do this trip and this was the beginning of what I felt like was the best year, the best entrepreneur year that I've had since being an entrepreneur. So I'm going to end my story by telling you that 2019 I ran, 
I ran and I worked hard. I wrote my goals. Um, and Mr. Dunbar, um, we can go over my goals if you like. Yeah. I don't know where the PDF is. Don't, I, I don't know where the I, um, huh? I put the PDF in the chat box. So guys, if you look in the chat box, I dropped the PDF there. So you can download it right there. It says Sharanda IV 2019. So we're about to read off here. Uh, you can you can download it there. So if you see if you don't see it there, let me know. Now again, don't worry about if you don't see it there. It's not the end of the world uh, because I am going to be uh, sending that to you guys in an email. So you're gonna get the audio of this training, the video of this training, uh, the chat, and you're going to get um, uh, you're gonna get this this PDF. So if you can't download it, you don't see it here. You will get it from me via email in 24 to 48 hours. But just look and say, it says Sharanda Ivy 2019 goals. And I'm looking up because I'm, I'm looking above my computer. Where is that? And it says, I am a CDLP trainer. She's 12-20-2019. Uh, uh, I learned level six on my B2B. I, I earned level six, which is a bonus level, on B2B incentive board on or before 12-20-2019. I am a top 10 producer in CDLP on or before 12-20-2019. I am recognized as the 2020 International Convention. I am recognized at the 2020 International Convention on stage for my production. I'm a special forces associate with personal and small business sales 12 20, 2019. I am a I am building a business in multiple states. I am in the top 10 for my new small group open on or before 12 20, 2020. I have personally written 35 small business plans on or before 12 20, 2019. I have successfully read a, a, a book a month in the year 2019. I have written over 1,000 personal memberships 12 20, 2019. She, she even, has, even has an asterisk on the bottom that says, read my goals daily, sometimes throughout the day. So before I get to her results, I want everybody to do me a favor. Um, that's on, you know, if you want, if, if you want to put, put, if you, if you don't want to put a goal there, that's fine. We're about to go over a couple of goals. Go ahead and just start dropping your goal, you know, one of your goals that's important to you in the chat box so that we can see that you guys are being interactive. Just put something, you know, if you, if you don't want it to be personal, just put something that's not as personal if you don't want to, uh, but, but drop it in the chat box, one of your goals that you're, that you're looking to hit uh, sometime uh, this year. And if you want to put a date with it, that would be fantastic because that would help with this. So, the results from what I just said, Sharanda, Sharanda Ivy's 2019 goals, uh, 2019 goals, the results are she received the call 12 17 2019 that she was the Georgia CDLP state trainer. So she set a goal to do it by December 20th and she got that phone call on 12 17. She earned level four B2B incentives. So she said she was going to shoot for level six. She ended up landing on level four B2B incentives, right? She said she wanted to be recognized going across the stage at the national convention. She did so by being the number one field trainer for the entire company. And she, is, she got the Ladies of Justice Award, which is the prestigious award that Legal Shield is now giving us. Uh, her, she earned her production award of 1,000 apps. If you look at uh, the, the, the gold numbers, um, let me see. Goal number 10, I have written over a thousand personal memberships. If you see for results, number four, I earned production work for a thousand apps. I'm a special forces solutions Sapphire associate. So he accomplished that goal. I have written, I have a seven, I have businesses in seven state business in seven states now and read more seven books, read more, seven books completed and implemented. And that's not to mention that she said in 2019 that she was gonna do 35 small business plans, and I believe 32, is that correct? Mm -hmm. 32 yeah. small business plans. Um, what else, what else did, she, did, she, did she accomplish here? Accountability. She's in a mastermind group that meets weekly. Uh, she's in a woman accountability group that meets Monday through Friday. She's connected with her workout partner that helped her hit more goals, and she has mentors sharing her goals and receiving coaching. So those are all things she's doing for accountability. So do you wanna to speak to that at all? That what I just mentioned up there. Uh, yeah. So, um, so those are the goals that I I wrote, and I wrote them daily. Um, it got to the place where I, I would write them about three times a week, but I read them daily. 
um, I had put myself in a place where I wanted to just stay in a grateful place. So where I talked about how I put my timer on my phone, uh, it would it would alarm and you know, me and my workout partner, she had eventually learned that that's what the alarm would be, be for, for me to say what I'm grateful for. And, you know, sometimes you forget that, you know, you forget to, you, you know, you're running for the goals and you do things, you're working hard, but sometimes you forget to realize when you're having a bad day, maybe you didn't hit the goals, maybe like um, every week um, the income goal is about, you know, 1050 So knowing that you might miss that goal or maybe you wanted to write a business plan this week and here it is Friday and you haven't written the plan. Sometimes you can, you can lose, you know, sight of being grateful, just thankful. And so along with those goals, I wrote what I was, th I was thankful and grateful for. But I also, you know, chatted that throughout the day. I would, you know, say that, you know, what, you know, I'm grateful, you know, thank God, I, you know, I'm grateful for this, I'm grateful for that. And I would set an alarm and do that. And then sometimes you forget that you had some wins. So it might've been a rough week or a rough day. You have to remind yourself that, okay, since I'm out here working, that's a win. And you have, sometimes you have to just remind yourself of that. 2019, I, I, I connected with a workout partner in my business. And I had never had a true workout partner. I, I, I never had that. And along with my goals, having that workout partner, that accountability every day helped me achieve my goals. So if you don't have a workout partner, it's very important in your business to have somebody that can uplift you when you're down, that can stretch you when you, you say, you know what, I don't feel like it today. I'm not going to make that dial today. I'm not going to go out and talk to that business owner. I'm not going to follow up with that prospect. When you have a workout partner and you guys sit down and make goals and commit to the process together, it's not you you're letting down. Now you got somebody else that's counting on you to help them get to their goals. But if you give yourself an out, sometimes you can make that person lose too. So you, you want to, you know, you want you need a workout partner, but you want one to be committed with the process with you so you both can grow and stretch. I know my workout partner had a phenomenal year in 2019 as well, because in our business, that is one of the, the core commitments that we need to have. So, you know, having that and reminding myself, um, having a little sticky notes up in my house, when you walk into my garage, when I go out my door every day, it says exhale, you know, exhale and inhale. So I exhale out the bad and I inhale the positive, which is courage. And that's on my door when I go out um, into my garage, you know, on my mirror in my bathroom is my affirmations, um, whether it's about, my, it's about my money or the day that I'm going to have, it's on my mirror in the middle of my bathroom. And those are just mind tricks that I do and that we all should do just to stay in front of us so we can hit those goals. So, you know, um, I do contribute the success I had these, these la this last year, last couple of years, is because of the goal setting, the, you know, the, the mentoring, you know, just putting my business in a position to win and not just dreaming or wishing, you know, send these hairy audacious goals and then it knocks us out of the business. That's not good. So you want to make sure you make smart goals. You want to make sure you you um, stretch yourself, connect with some accountability partners and some uh, workout partners and some mentors, and, and, and make sure you share your goals with people, you know, because if you don't share them, you will let yourself down. I promise you, you will. I did for five years. So so with that, Mr. Dunbar, I'll turn it back over to you. Okay, so question for you, uh, accountable. Um, being accountable to your workout partner or whatever, how are you and your workout partner holding each other accountable? What kind of permission have you given your workout partner to um to, to really get on your case when you're not uh, doing what, what you said you was going to do on your part of being accountable? Well, we haven't come up with consequences. We um So we're in a place right now, we, we just finished the first quarter, so we're getting ready to set up, we're getting ready to run start May 1st for the second quarter. 
the next six months we're running hard because we we're going to have Irene by Charlotte our next leadership convention um and so therefore we haven't set consequences we we probably said those by the first but we will we've talked about them but we haven't put them down on paper but um but we will be doing things that if we don't hit our goals that we'll have consequences to come. We just hadn't just put those down, but we talk every day. Um, we have a goal of setting dials uh, since we can't go out in COVID. Um, we have a goal of setting dials. Um, we have an income goal. We don't chase qualifications. We chase income goals and you taught us that. Um, and so therefore, um, we're, we're just working on it. We're working on the plan and um, it's been a great first quarter. Um, especially for my workout partner she's hit some goals already but uh, we will have some consequence goals bad goals if we don't hit these goals that we're getting ready to do i can only imagine um what she she'll put out there for me that's good that's good and it's, it's important because you got to have somebody hold you accountable i know when i was running for my 100k ring i had um Kylo brown darnell self uh, alistair edwards danny katoa a whole, actually, it was a host of other people. I had about uh, Fatima Salam. I think I had about nine people hold me accountable. Uh, so I was sending them my numbers. I was calling them. If I was missing, I had to make that call to say, hey, I missed, you know, I missed the ring. Uh, and if it was one time, I missed it by like, I think it was like seven days or something like that. I missed the ring. And um, I pushed my numbers back like incredibly. I missed it by like a week. And I think my numbers went back like 2,300 or something like that. So I had to make like 2,300 hours up plus what I had to make up the next week anyway. And it was like, you know, it's like heart wrenching. It's like you're not. It's like it's so frustrating, and and um, you know, I it, mean, it, it's it's worth it all, but it's 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 really it's really it really makes you push because you can give up on yourself, but you won't give up on uh yourself when you've got people holding you accountable. It's easy when you don't put your goal out there for people to just say you know to, to dismiss it. It's easy to, to to say, look, I missed the ring, but nobody knows I was running for it. If I don't hit a director and nobody's holding me accountable, then I just miss it and nobody knows but me. But if I tell somebody my goal, if I have somebody hold me accountable, now I have to let somebody know that I missed that goal. And that's embarrassing sometimes. Um, you, you know, it, it can be a, a, a ego thing sometimes. So it's, it's very easy to hide. And that's why I'm very transparent. And even with not just my workout partners, I, I would do it on Facebook. You know what I mean? I, I would put, I would, I would, I would have people that I would text and say stuff too. So I was telling people, hey, I'm running for my ring. I have my ring. My ring is coming up, and you know, people ask you. You know, you know, people ask you like, hey, did you get your ring yet? And this is embarrassing if you haven't gotten your ring. So you you have to have people holding you accountable as you as you move forward in these things. So thanks for that. So what I want to do real quick before we close out, uh, uh, I, I want to uh, get you guys to at least start the process. And what does that mean? That means take a goal that you've already been. I saw a lot of you guys put goals there. Uh, uh, Jacqueline put Performance Club uh, Pro by May 23rd. I've got uh, Shanta West. I, I plan to hit executive director by December 2020. Um, I've got uh, Rose Pruitt, hit senior director by June 30th. Carolyn Bowens, my goal is, is, is May is to open up two groups in CDLP. So let's look at, um, let's look at this SMART goal part of it and look at um, specific, look at uh, measurable, look at action oriented, look at result oriented, look at tangible, look at trackable. So ask yourself, write down on a sheet of paper, and we're going to give you guys about two minutes to do this, but write down on a sheet of paper um, about your group, is it, how specific is it? So when a person says, when you say, I'm going to hit senior direct, director, I want, you to, I want you to make that specific. I want you to ask, I want you to ask yourself, if you, are you going to do that on your own? Or do you have legs that are going to be right in that business too? And how much are you going to be getting out of each leg? Because you can only take 400 out of a leg for, for senior director. So you need to know, am I, am, is it 400 coming out of this specific leg and I'm writing the rest? Or do I got different legs contributing to this uh, senior director? Because again, if you don't have in place a plan to at least move forward, then where do you, where do you go to to get your numbers? Because it's easy to say, I'm going to hit senior director this month. I'm going to hit executive director this month. Well, where are the premium dollars going to come from? Because if you don't write that much business yourself, you have to identify what legs are going to write that business. 
You have to identify whether you're going to recruit into your business to get to make that go. If I'm running for the ring and I normally make three grand a month, well, how am I going to go for three grand to 4166 Where's that other $1,600 coming from? If I don't know where it's coming from. Right. So you, you, you need it to be specific because you have to have somewhere to reach when things aren't working. So now it's the fifth of the month, it's the sixth of the month, it's the seventh of the month, and your numbers don't match up. And see, I do my numbers day for day. So if you're saying I want to make $4,166 uh, uh, in a month, then divide that by 30, and every day you should be looking at your commission statement and seeing if you match that number. Because see, when you're doing that, you're catching the correction, the course correction when it's small. So if you ask somebody that's on this line right now, who's got the ring or who hits executive director, it's easy to course correct when it's a small amount. So if I do, let, let me do the math here while, while, while we're on this Zoom here. <clears throat> Quick math for you guys. So you, so you guys know what I mean, because I know sometimes you need a, a visual. It's not really gonna be a visual, but it's gonna, it's gonna be kind of a visual. So $4,166, right? So if I divide that by 30, that's $138 a day. I need to make $138 a day. So if I'm trying to make $138 a day, that means on day three, I should be at $416. So if it's by the third of the month, I'm not at $416, I look at my commission statement, I look at my statistics, and I see that I've only made $300. That means I'm $116 short. You know you need to make that up. It's easy to make up $116. But if you wait until the 15th of the month and you down a thousand dollars, that's when you say, you know what? I'm gonna run, I'm gonna, I'm gonna do it again. I'm gonna do it next month. Because now you're overwhelmed because you're thinking, where am I gonna get an extra thousand dollars from? When you realize you are $116 short, guys, you can write a membership and get that. You can say, well, you know what? Let me hit the phones really hard and close another membership today. That'll catch my numbers up. So you gotta have it specific. So as I'm talking, I hope you guys are, are, are kind of mentally doing this. Like on your sheet of paper, whatever your goal is that you have, I read some off that was in the chat. I want you to say, how specific do I have this goal? And do I need to go ahead and make it more specific? So go ahead and make it more specific. Uh, I'm, I'm, I'm just, just, just write something specific about that goal. I'm gonna give you guys about 60 seconds to do that. Thirty seconds left. What time, y'all? I got my clock up here. <clears throat> All right, so, so, so hopefully you're able to write something that was specific about that goal. So let's look at measurable uh, now. We want the goal to be measurable. Uh, you want it to be meaningful. So I want you to tie your goal, right? Tie your goal directly to something that really means something to you guys. Yeah, and, I, and I'm serious about this. It has to be something important. You have to tie it to something very important. Um, it, it could be you want to put your kid in a, in a different school. Maybe you want to put your kid in a private school. Uh, maybe your child doesn't. Uh, I, let, let me give you a, perfect, a personal example. So my income has started, I have started running behind on my ring in April. No, March. March of last year, I was running behind on my ring. And I had a bunch of stuff going on. So it wasn't that I wasn't trying to work. I just had a lot of stuff. I was spread thin. And I was, I was, I was getting under pressure because I was spread thin. And my daughter, because uh, for, for those that know me, I have a granddaughter. My daughter was due to have her baby on April 15th. And I had promised my daughter that I was going to be in town for an entire month when she, had, when she had the baby because her mother had just gotten a new position 
um, at her job and she couldn't come. So I said, I'm gonna come up there for a month. So I had already promised my daughter this. I was running behind on income. I so I'm not running behind on money, but running behind on my income goal to hit my 100K ring. Uh, so I kept landing at 79 and 74 and 72 and whatever I was landing on instead of 83. So I really had to make it meaningful. And I had to make it meaningful because I told myself, I said, if I don't catch my numbers up by a certain date, I'm gonna have to pick up the phone and call my daughter and tell my daughter that I can't come up there for a month. And I didn't want to do that because her mom already wasn't coming and I wasn't gonna leave. Now, my whole family's up there, so it's not like she wouldn't have been okay, but I didn't want to break that promise to my daughter. So I really ran, I ran really hard and then um, all the trainings that I was setting up to go do because I do my trainers every weekend, I scheduled those up there. So I did a training like in West Virginia. I did one in, uh, in Pennsylvania. I did one in Ohio. I did one in New Jersey. I did trainings up there so that I could be up there for a month. So I said, well, I'm gonna schedule all my trainings up north because that's where I'm gonna be at for a month. So I had to make a whole lot of different changes in order to be up there for a month with my, with, with my daughter and my new granddaughter. But when my income was running behind, I was running behind my numbers, I had to force myself and I had, to, I had to find something meaningful and I just did not want to make that call. I did not want to make a call to my daughter and tell her, hey, I'm, I'm not going to be able to come up here because that would have broke her heart. And I was just like, you know what? I got to figure it out. And that's what I did. And I got my numbers together. So tie, guys, tie your goal to something meaningful so that when things start slowing down or whatever happens, you don't let you don't allow that to to keep you from earning the income you need to earn to get to that position. So again, we're gonna give you guys sixty seconds. I know you guys are thinking while I'm talking, so I'm gonna give you guys sixty more seconds. Plus, I don't want to have you on the Zoom all night. That's right, your word is your bond. My, my daughter, she'd be mad at me for six months about that. That wouldn't have been, that wouldn't have been no, that wouldn't have been no, I'm mad at you to tomorrow. Uh-uh. <laughs> she, she'd have been mad. She'd have been mad for a lot longer than that. Wow. <laughs> I think she's still mad at her mother. <laughs> <laughs> and her mother had a bad week. <laughs> Absolutely. So, all right, guys. So, I'm just getting you guys going. So, the next one is going to be attainable, attainable and action oriented. So, again, let's look back at your goals. Whether you're running for executive director, whether you're just saying, um, I want more customers. So, if I'm, a, I'm a fitness trainer, and I'm saying, I want more customers um, right now. Okay, that's attainable. Get more customers in the How many more customers do you want? How many more customers do you want? You gotta be specific about that. You gotta be measurable, right? And then you gotta be attainable and action oriented. So if you if you only got 20 customers right now, then I wouldn't say in the next 30 days I want to have 200. That's stretching it. So if you're saying I got 20 customers and I want to get myself to 30 in the next 30 days, what are you gonna do? What's how is that action oriented? How are you going to get more customers? Are you going to go to, to, to social media and do some marketing there? Are you going to, are you going to run a special or cut prices? If you're running for executive director in Legal Shield and you're trying to make this goal attainable, you're trying to make it action oriented. That's what you are you going to up your phone calls? Are you going to up going out more? Are you going are you going to reach out to your team that's not really working anymore and see what you can do to get them back active? Are you going to run for bonuses that may be on the table? So make it action oriented. Right, so 30, uh, 60 seconds. 60 seconds. Make it action oriented. Two more after that. All
just so you know, Sharanda, your mic is open, so we just looking at you like on the big screen. Just so you know, I mean, you know, not, it might don't matter. I'm just telling you. <laughs> you was like the big screen, so I know you was over there working on something. Good stuff, Mary. I see it. I see it, Mary. Good stuff. Good stuff, Jackie Hamilton. Lisa Richardson. Tyson Farrington. All right. All right. So let's move on to the next one. The next one is going is going to be our, our, our. And it's out of smart. So we want it to be result orientated as well. Result orientated as well. How are you going to be able to track that to see that there's a different result? Because you're going to need that to say, okay, you know what? It is working. It is working. So uh, if, if, I, if I'm a tax office owner and I'm saying, hey, look, I'm going to market in this new complex that's opened up. I'm going to widen my radius of where I'm doing my marketing. Is it result orientated? Am I, am I, going to, am I doing a, a, a new thing or adding something to my goal that I'm going to be able to see the result so I know that it actually worked? So if I'm a fitness trainer and I'm doing this marketing on Facebook, how am I tracking this Facebook marketing to make sure? How am I tracking my Instagram marketing? Do I have some kind of um, uh, way for people to comment? Or do I have some, uh, at the end of my video that I'm shooting on YouTube, do I have something that lets me know that I'm getting people's attention? Are people responding and saying, hey, look, I saw this video. Um, I'm interested in becoming one of your clients because I was going to do it and I just couldn't afford $99. Now you're doing $49. Like it's got to be result orientated where you can see the results coming in. You got to see the results coming in. I know that when I was running for my ring here at Legal Shield, what it's, 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 it's easy. It's easy to be results orientated. Did I make more money this week than I made last week? Did I make more money this month than I made last month? It's real easy to track that. So make sure it's result orientated. Result oriented. You guys got 60 seconds. To make the ad the ad result orientated to your goal that you have there. Another angle you can use for results orientated too is, is reward yourself. That's another way you can do it results orientated. So um, if so I'm I'm on a, I'm on a meal plan, right? Because I'm 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 I got some some body composition things I'm doing, like I said earlier. So I'm an ice cream fanatic. So anybody know me know I used to probably about two years ago, I literally ate ice cream seven days a week. So like I would have I would have four or five different kinds of ice cream in my refrigerator at any given time so i'm really i'm a really big ice cream fanatic so when i'm setting my when i when i like now i'm on a meal plan i'm in a caloric intake and all some other stuff and what i do now is if i keep myself on my decreased caloric intake on a weekly basis i go get ice cream i reward myself by going to get ice cream or I'll reward myself by going to get something else that I like to eat. Like I'll go to Cheesecake Factory or something like that because I'm a cheesecake fanatic as well. So results orientated can also be hit that goal and then this is what I can do and I can't do it until I hit that goal. So you can also have that as results orientated as well because some everybody's body and mind works differently. So you want to make sure that you do it in a way that you're going to do it. So like for me, with my fitness stuff that I do, like, I'm, I can't do diets. I'm not a dieter. It's not a chance. Like, I just, it just doesn't work in my brain. So I never diet. I got different ways that I do caloric intake and all that stuff, but I cannot diet. I cannot go on no paleo diet or no keto diet. I'm no carbs, no sugar. I'm not doing none of that. I, I, do, I do it a different way because I'm just not that kind of person. So I had to find meal plan stuff that worked for me that I could actually do. So I had to make it attainable, right? It was something that I really would be able to stick with, and that's what I did. So last one, guys, T, we want it to be trackable and time-based 
trackable on time base. So put a time on that goal. Put a time on that goal. A time on that goal. So if you say, hey, I'm going, I'm going to get my ring, then put a date on that ring. Put, 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 put a date on that ring and say, okay, I'm going to have my ring by this date. So it's okay if you miss it. Uh, if you say, I'm going to start making 30 calls a day, when? Next week? You're going to make it? Or are you going to, do, are you going to start doing them Wednesday? What day are you going to start making those calls? Um, if, if you're saying, hey, look, um, I'm going to, I have a goal to build my customer base as a personal trainer. And I want to get, I want to, I want to go from 20 to 30 customers. Okay. What time frame are you giving yourself to do that? Because if you give yourself 30 days and in 30 days, you did seven more. Well, guess what? You got seven new clients. You fell short three, but you got seven new. So then you set another goal. You set another goal, but it needs to be time-based. It needs to be trackable because what did we say earlier? You cannot increase what you do not track. You cannot decrease what you do not track. I do not like counting sugar intake, sugar grams, and all this kind of stuff every day. I don't like doing it because I don't like doing admin work. But if I want to accomplish the goal I'm trying to accomplish, I have to stretch myself. And I have to do some things that I'm not really comfortable doing. So I'm doing it. So you have to track it. The same way that now what am I, I'm on the way to the 150K ring now. I have to track my income. I have to look at, like I showed you the chart, I have to look at all of my income and where it's coming from because I have to change it all. I have to get more residual income. What does that mean? That means that I have to make sure that on a day like today, Wednesday, when I get an email from the corporate office that says, you've got these um, free cancels, I have to make sure I call them. Because I got to keep the people on my books on my books because that pays out residual income. So if I lose customers that's on my books that's been there three, four, five, six, seven years, now I'm taking away from my residual income and I need to build up my residual income because that's one of my sources of income to get me to the 150K rank. So it's got to be trackable. So make sure you're tracking. So you got 60 seconds, guys. Trackable, trackable, trackable. Ten seconds. Okay, okay. So you guys have 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 now set, added some smart to your goals. I want you to go through all of your goals and kind of do that. Uh, you know, a little bit at a time. Don't overwhelm yourself doing it. Let me go ahead and allow. Let me see. I'm gonna take some questions. I know it's 8.30, so if anybody needs to go ahead and jump off, I totally understand that, guys. Don't, don't worry about it. If you gotta jump off, remember it's recorded. But I'm gonna go, I'm go, I just allow people to unmute themselves. If anybody has any questions for me or Sharan, I believe Sharan is still here. I think she just got her camera uh, hidden. But uh, if you got any questions, uh, go ahead and chime in with any questions before we close out. I'm gonna help you guys with any questions that you may have before we close out. Just hit your unmute button. You should be able to hit your unmute button. Or raise your hand. If, you're, if you can't unmute your button, raise your hand, and, uh, and then I'll unmute you if it's not unmuting you. And you can raise your hand in the, um, if you go to like the chat. <clears throat> Estelle, Miss Estella Blake, go ahead. <laughs> How are uh, you? Yeah, yes, um, this has uh, definitely been uh, valuable for me. Um, one of the areas that I have a challenge in is the tracking. And uh, I heard you say that you do a tracking for your income mm -hmm. in terms of, I, I mean, do you track that on a spreadsheet or how do you do that? You can do it. You can be technical and do it on a spreadsheet if, you, if you're that kind of person. Everybody's personality is different. So some people may actually like go to Excel or something and do it. I do it like on just, on just a sheet of paper. I got a bunch of pads like this. 
Mm -hmm. I just write it. Okay. I just write the date. So I got on here April 19th, and then I put the dollar amount that came in. And then in parentheses, I put how much of that was residual or how much of that was from overrides, how much was that for personal sales. If it was bonus money in there, I put that in there. So I put it all in there. So then at the end of my sheet, right, at the end of my sheet, when it's done, when it's done being calculated on the bottom, I, mm -hmm. I can tell at the end of the month, I made this much in, in residual, this much in sales, this much in overrides, this much in bonus money. Okay, and what was the other tracking sheet that you used? The other tracking sheet I used was for, that was for, um, well, I got another one for, for when you're running for a ring, which um, it shows you what you make, and that's, in, that's on the page. If you go to the, to the uh, my entrepreneur play, coming to the entrepreneur page, that chart is there. But you can pull that chart, and it shows you this is what you need to make to get the ring. This is what you made this month, and then how much you got left. If you run oh, okay. It. Yeah, okay. my other my other tracker is 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 just is, is, is for it's health stuff. So I use my fitness pal. But okay. some of the things that don't track, like it it tracks sugar, but it doesn't track included sugars. It it does everything. So if I eat uh an orange, it's gonna give me that sugar, but that's not what I'm counting. I mean, because natural sugar is natural sugar. I'm not concerned about natural sugar, I'm concerned about sugar in products. So I have to mm -hmm. track my own included sugars because the, my fitness pal app doesn't do that. It okay. just to that sugar. You know what I mean? And I and I and that's, I'm not looking at that. I'm looking at things that I'm eating that that, that that somebody put sugar in. If that makes sense. Yep. So does it help you to be on schedule when you do that? Like, okay, this is when I'm gonna do that. Well, you mean on the on the meal stuff? You mean? Well, not on just the meal, but just whenever you're tracking, or you just do it randomly, or do you have set times? Like, okay, this is when I take care of this. Oh, no, I don't have set times because my schedule is kind of all over the place, you know, especially like because I'm in legal shop, I'm in network marketing. I have three-way calls and stuff. I do. I got all kinds of stuff going on there. So um, I don't do it at any specific time. I just make sure it's done by the end of the day. So by, okay. before I go to bed at night, I close my, my Fitness Pal app out. I know what my caloric intake was, whether I was above or below, and I know what my numbers were for the day. And if for some reason I'm so burnt out and tired that I don't do my numbers, then when I get up in the morning, after I listen to my, you know, my religious stuff, that's the very first thing I do. The very first okay. thing I do is my numbers if I didn't do them. Because, you know, every, you know, being realistic, sometimes I'm just too tired. Mm -hmm. And I don't do them at night. So when I get up in the morning, that's what I do before I start my day to make sure. Because I want to know where I'm at. When I go to start my day, where are my numbers at? I got to know where my, my numbers is at. Because how do I know how much money I need to make today if I don't know what I made yesterday and I'm, I'm not adding that to my pile of numbers? You know what I mean? That's so you have, you have to do that every day. You have to do it every day. Absolutely. Anybody else need to unmute and ask a question? I see somebody else unmuted. Go ahead and speak if you unmute it. You, if you got something you need to. Or raise your hand. Is that it? Anybody done with questions? Oh, let me check the chat real quick. Make sure I'm missing nothing. So Jody, I don't know whether this is a question or you just telling me something. Hold on. I'm just putting my goals down. Okay, you're putting your goals down. Okay, okay. I didn't know whether that was a question. Thank you. Absolutely, absolutely. All right, going once. Going twice. All right, you guys have been fantastic. So again, if you got the recording to be uh, released probably 24 to 48 hours from now, uh, you can you can you can pretty much just um, Wait for the email. It'll come from me, and it'll it'll tell you guys. Uh, it'll have this recording. It'll have the PDF with Sharanda's goals and her results from her goals. It'll also be the audio for this. It'll also be the slideshow that you looked at. That'll be in there as well. Uh, so you guys will you guys will have that. Um, and uh, next week, how to train your brain to do whatever you want it to do. So we're gonna talk about that next week, so that you can start getting your mind, getting yourself in a place where you control your mind instead of your mind controlling you. And that's, that's what you guys want to do. So absolutely. All right. Well, you guys. Thank you so much. <laughs> oh, oh, absolutely. Absolutely. And go to the YouTube page. I got plenty of videos. There. I think I got 40 something odd videos on YouTube. 
you know, I'm all becoming an entrepreneur page. There's, there's things there as well. So an Instagram as well. I, I've got training stuff on all those places. So you can go there and, and, uh, and, and look at whatever you want to look there. Cause I always upload everything there as well. So, uh, so, and remember to subscribe to my YouTube page, unless you don't like me. If you don't want to subscribe to it, don't do it. Give me a thumbs up if you like it. Give me a thumbs down if you don't like it so I can fix whatever you don't like. All right, you guys have a fantastic evening. Thank you so much, Ms. Sharanda, for helping me out here. I appreciate your story. Thank you for having me. And your experience. Absolutely. Thank you. Appreciate your mentorship and your friendship. Appreciate right. you, sir. That's my bestie. I'll call you later. <laughs> All righty. All right. Have a good evening, everyone. Thank you, too. Good night, everyone. Thank you so much, you guys. Oh, absolutely. Bye, Good night. Good night. See you, Mr. Dunbar. See you later. Thank you for joining. Yes, sir. <laughs>